Hey Spitfire people, how are you? Happy Friday, or happy whatever day of the week it is for you. Um, and greetings from Spitfire land. Uh, we're gonna go for a walk today. I've got my mask, I'm ready to go. Um, and I invite you to take a walk too. Wear a mask, bring a grown up. If you're allowed to go for walks by yourself, that's totally cool, but definitely let them know you're going. Um, so we've been talking, well, how was your love you day? Did you make a I love you day jar? Yeah, how was it re received? Yeah. My kids did not want to give me my I love you day jar. They wanted to do their own thing. So better luck next time. Um, we've been talking a lot about family and today we continue by talking about family within a community. We're reading My Poppy Has a Motorcycle, which is a beautiful book and really fun. Um, so we'll be reading that book today. And this is a book about a little girl who every night when her dad comes home from work, she climbs on the back of his big motorcycle and they go for a ride around town. Um, it's autobiographical. What does that mean? Autobiography. Autobiographical. That means that it is written by the author about their own life. So author is Isabel Quintero, and she wrote about her own life growing up in a town called Corona, California, which is a real place and it has nothing to do with the coronavirus. So we'll be learning a little bit about her experience on the back of her dad's motorcycle um, in Corona, California. And then we'll go for a walk, cool. So let's get started, shall we? My Poppy Has a Motorcycle by Isabel Quintero and illustrated by Zeke Pena. What's Poppy? Yep, it's a way of saying dad in Spanish. It's a lot like daddy. My Poppy Has a Motorcycle. Oh, it's always tricky figuring out where to put the book on the screen. Here we go. My Poppy Has a Motorcycle. From him, I've learned words like carburetor and cariño, drill and dedication. When I hear his gray truck pull into our driveway, I run outside with both of our helmets. Thump, thump. My Poppy the Carpenter is covered in sawdust and smells like a hard day at work. His hands are rough from building homes every day, his job since he first arrived in this country. But even though he comes home tired, he always has time for me. When our city is winding down, he takes me for a ride. Today, he's going to show me the new houses he's working on. Poppy is careful with my ponytail as he pulls my helmet tight. When he lifts me onto the smooth black seat, his hands don't feel rough. They don't feel tired. They feel like all the love he has trouble saying. Lista? Si. Are you ready? Yes. Poppy revs the engine and the smell of gasoline hits me as he squeezes the accelerator. Con cuidado, be careful. The motor rumbles and growls. Vroom. Agarrate. Hold on. And then we take off. The shiny blue metal of the motorcycle glows in the sun. The sun, the sun, the bright orange sun is on its way down, turning our sky blue and purple and gold. We become a spectacular celestial thing soaring on asphalt, a comet, the sawdust falling from Poppy's hair and clothes become a tail following us. Poppy zigzags through the streets. We pass Abuelita's church and tortilla, man, y'all my Spanish is tough, tortilla, tortilleria la estrella and stop for stray cats crossing in front of us. Mommy thinks there's too many of them. 
but I think there's just enough. We pass Joy's Market, where Mummy buys my gummy bears. Mr. Garcia, our librarian, is walking out the door and nods at us. We nod back. This is how we always greet each other. We roar past murals that tell our history of citrus groves and immigrants who worked them and of the famous road race that took place on Grand Boulevard a hundred years ago. Now I know that we're stopping at Don Rudy's Raspados. But as we near the shop, we see that it's empty and out of business. I can tell Poppy is disappointed. I imagine the smell of the sweet syrups Don Rudy used to flavor our shaved ice. Bloop, bloop, bloop. I won't be the only one who misses him. So the shaved ice place closed. Are things closing here? Do you ever go for a walk and feel like maybe the neighborhood isn't the same as it used to be? Yeah, a lot of things are closed right now and it's not the same. And so I think this book wasn't written during the coronavirus, even though it takes place in Corona, California. But um, change is something that we all experience and our, our, our towns will change and our homes will change. Um, and it's tough, especially right now when everything is changing. And so I thought that that was a nice um, thing that we have in common with the author right now. As we ride on, I feel and hear everyone and everything we pass by. Each sound landing on my ears rebuilds whole neighborhoods inside me. No matter how far I go from this place or how much it changes, this city will always be with me. We cruise by Abuelito and, Abuel Abuelito and Abuelita's old yellow house, the one with a lemon tree that grew from the seeds of the lemons Abuelito used to pick not far from here. Mommy says we're going to visit them tomorrow to cut nopales from their garden and eat herb uh, herby abundingas in Abuelita's kitchen, where the food always tastes better. We turn the corner and then... Mija, adios me, mi re reina, adios. The dogs behind the fences go wild. Woof, 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 woof. Frankie, the Lopez's labradoodle, escapes from her yard and runs after us. Mercedes Lopez, the fastest runner in our class, races after her. And then, just as fast as, just as fast, the dogs barking and Mercedes and Frankly, Frankie become a soft hush in the distance. They're right behind us. Have you ever had to run away from a rab labradoodle? <laughs> We ride toward the new homes, replacing the last of the citrus groves. The painters, drywallers, and floor layers all greet us, but we can barely hear their words amid the sounds of hammers and air compressors. Trabajando duro, muchachos? A little bit, not too much. Even in all that noise, my poppy's voice touches everything. Around the circle. This is my favorite part. On Grand Boulevard, we lean into the curve of the street. I make believe we're in one of the races that took place here so long ago. It's our last lap and we have to win. The crowd cheers us on. I feel Puppy smile as I squeeze my arms tighter around him. Vamos Puppy, faster, faster. We fly around the circle. There's the school where we practice soccer. There's the post office where Mr. Charlie takes our letters. And La Pandaria where Papi buys conchas on Sunday mornings. And here it is. All of our beautiful city. My eyes try to catch everything, but the colors of, our ha of the houses blend into one another. Red, blue, green, orange, pink. Vroom! We 
we ride, ride, ride until the blue glow of, from the motorcycle begins to dim and our comet tail has been left behind on the streets we've traveled. We head home and slowly the engine echoes us back onto our street and then our driveway, our finish line. Mommy and little brother hear the motorcycle and run out to greet us. Mommy waves us in just like a referee. Poppy and I can't stop laughing. We had a good ride. Through our laughter, I hear a familiar sound. Honk, honk, raspados. I think about my city and all the changes that it's been through and all the changes that will come. Look. Raspados. Chicle y fresa, por favor. But I know that here in our little house, there are things that will always stay the same. Manana, we fly again. Isn't that sweet? I love that book. Especially because there aren't a lot of books about girls and their dads going out and doing stuff. Moms come up a lot, but not a lot of our books have dads. Um, so I love those stories. Um, so y'all want to go for a walk? Wait, can we talk about family and culture? We talked a bit about like the atmosphere of family and I think that this book did a really good job of describing the atmosphere of the author's family. Like she described how her dad was so hardworking, but he had a hard time saying that he loved her. Like the, the love didn't come out of his mouth necessarily, but he showed it um, and she could feel it, you know? Things like that, it's just really beautiful imagery. Imagery, important vocabulary word. Imagery is a way of creating an image in the mind through writing. So um, that wasn't necessarily in the picture, right? It was in the words and we could imagine it and understand it and relate to it because it's feelings that we've had before probably. Um, so I just think that this book does a really great job of connecting the family to the community because it all goes together, going back to the what makes you who you are. The community in which you live is a big part of who you are, or at least who you um, started off as, right? All right, let's go for a walk. I have my mask that my dear friend Miss Teeny made for me. Um, all right, can you hear me? I'm gonna try to speak clearly, but I might be a little muffled because I'm being safe. So we are gonna go for a walk and we're gonna use our five senses to take in our environment. So one of the things my puppy has a motorcycle did really well is um, create or, or use the senses to describe. So that she, you, she could smell the sawdust, she saw the mural, she heard the music at the job site. So she used her five senses, she, she tasted that arrasparos. Um, so she used her five senses to tell a story. And we can use our five senses all the time, right? We do. But we don't usually slow down and notice it. Remember Breathe and Be, our very first book we read together? So we're gonna have a very mindfully aware walk around my neighborhood. I'm bringing my journal because I'm gonna make notes of what I see. You can go to the spitfireclub.org and there's a printables section in the program page. I'll also include a link with this video where you can download a uh, worksheet where you can write or draw what you sense in your five senses um, walk, but you don't need a worksheet. You just need a piece of paper. All right, but take note. All right, let's go. Here we go. Out the door. We're doing big things, Spitfire people. We are leaving the bookshelf, walking down the stairs. That piece of my wall that needs to be fixed. This is my family. I see my family walking out the gate. What do I hear? I hear my kids playing. I hear birds. I hear my neighbors talking. Earlier somebody was playing guitar out here. That was nice. I heard that. What can you hear? 
I smell, it rained earlier today and I smell the rain. I smell springtime. I see these blackberry, look at these. This is blackberry growing in my neighbor's yard. Yeah. So what do you do when you see people on the street in your neighborhood? Do you wave? Do you smile? Do you nod like our narrator does? Yeah. And I could keep going walking around the neighborhood with you. I could show you how there's a lavanderia, a laundromat down the street. Um, that I think is still open right now. Yeah, I can show you the walking path that we can take. Oh, somebody's playing music. That's fun. Oh, I smell cigarettes because somebody's smoking. Yucky. That's gross. Mmm, honeysuckle. Mmm, I can smell it through my mask. All right. So welcome to my neighborhood. Go for a walk around yours. Write down what you see. I'll see you soon.